Hey there everyone and planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today's video is the last and final video in the series that I've been doing all about what you should be doing during certain um, month time frames and, and steps in your wedding planning process. So if you haven't seen any of the other videos, I will, um, I have a whole playlist for them that I will link above for you that maps out everything you should be doing during each stage of wedding planning. So today's video is all about uh, the 10 things you should do the day before your wedding. So it is the day before your wedding, you're getting married tomorrow, you might be feeling super calm and ready, everything's checked off the list and ready to go, or maybe you're feeling a little bit stressed out, a little bit nervous that you don't have everything done that you need to. So here are the 10 things that you should be doing the day before your wedding. First of all, you want to make sure that you're touching base with all of your bridal party members, whether that's a group text or you're individually uh, communicating with each one about your uh, wedding rehearsal. So making sure that everybody's going to be in town, everybody knows what time the rehearsal is at and where they need to be and all of that so that you can have a smooth and efficient wedding rehearsal. Number two, uh, begin setting up for your wedding if your venue allows. If you have access to your wedding venue the day prior to your wedding, this is a great time to at least bring stuff out to your venue so that you have everything on site, whether you're physically setting up the day before or not. Although if you do have the time to do so, the venue allows, I highly recommend setting up as much as possible the day before your wedding. And maybe that's just setting up the, the tables and chairs. Um, if you're doing it outdoors, you obviously don't wanna put any sort of linens on overnight in case it rains or um, there's bugs or you know leaves or anything that can brush dirt and get onto your linens um, So if you're doing anything outside just set up tables and chairs and don't put anything on the tables um, if you are doing a Reception inside you can set up as much as you want on the tables um, and have everything as set and ready to go as you can Number three, review your rental checklist, your decor checklist, um, whether you're providing things, most of the things yourself or you're renting most of the items, have a decor checklist, list out where everything's coming from and what the purpose that item is going to serve so that whoever is in charge of setting up on your wedding day, if it is not you, which it shouldn't be you so that you can be enjoying your wedding morning and getting ready and doing all the photos and everything that you need to do, um, you have clear instructions for whoever is in charge of setting up the space on your wedding day and making sure Sure all of the details are in place and knowing where those items are coming from as well as where they need to go at the end of the night. Number four, ensure you have an overnight bag packed with everything that you're going to need for your wedding night. So if you're not coming right back home to your house after the wedding, um, you're going to want to make sure that you have items that you need to go to your hotel or if you're staying on site at the venue the night before or the night after the night of your wedding, that you have all the items that you need ready to go and packed up in a bag and that you have a plan to get that bag to wherever it needs to be at the end of the night. Number five, confirm your transportation. So you and your partner's transportation, um, hopefully all of the transportation for your guests and bridal party and everything else should already be confirmed. Um, but make sure that you know what your plan is for you and your partner at the end of the night, whether you are leaving early in a getaway car before the end of the party, or if you're leaving at the end of the night with everybody else and making sure you have a safe ride to wherever you need to go. Number six, have your wedding rehearsal. Um, I have a video all about wedding rehearsals that I'll link that goes into a lot more detail here, but essentially you wanna make sure that you are running through through the process for the ceremony that your bridal party knows their order and when they're walking down the aisle where they're going to stand and that you and your partner and your officiant are all comfortable with the order of events during the ceremony you know when things are happening you know how long it's going to take and you're comfortable with everything that's going to happen during your ceremony number seven pack your emergency kit. Um, again, I have a whole video all about emergency kits. If you don't know what I'm referring to here or you wanna know everything that goes in one, um, this is basically everything that you're going to need on your wedding day. Maybe not even need, but just have just in case. That's why it's an emergency kit in case of an emergency. Um, so all those items that you might need on your wedding day or things that can help you get out of a pickle if you uh, find yourself in one on your wedding day should be all packed and ready to go. Um, again, if you have a wedding planner, then this is likely going to be 
um, brought with them, they likely will have their own emergency kit as I do. However, it's good to know um, some of these items that you might wanna have yourself and have them on hand for you. Number eight, have all of your final payments and tips prepared for vendors that are going to be delivered on the wedding day. So if you have any vendors whose remaining balances are due on the wedding day, have those prepared, have the checks written out already and have them in labeled envelopes. This also goes for any of the vendors that you plan to tip on the wedding day. Um, that way you can just hand them off to somebody, whether that is your wedding planner or your maid of honor or a family member, whoever is in charge of distributing payments on your wedding day, pass those off to somebody else, but make sure that you have them prepared beforehand. Number nine, this is probably when you're going to give your gifts to your bridal party and or parents and any other family members. It is kind of traditional to give bridal party members a little gift. A lot of times, especially for bridesmaids, um, this is an item that they will use on the wedding day. So maybe it's a bridal robe that you guys are all gonna get uh, ready and matching ones on the wedding day or some jewelry that they're going to wear on the wedding day. Um, for men, a lot of times this is something like a flask or a knife or some kind of personalized item. Maybe it's the tie that they're going to wear on the wedding day. Whatever that may be, this is typically the time to distribute those gifts. And number 10, it's going to sound super obvious and cliche, but make sure that you're drinking lots of water and get tons of sleep. So I know the day before the wedding, there's usually so many things to finalize, your nerves and your your anxiety is probably gonna be at an all-time high. There's so many people coming into town that you're excited to see and, and communicating with so many different people, but make sure that the day before your wedding, you are eating plenty, that you are getting lots of water, that you're hydrating um, on the wedding day. There's a good chance that you will probably not be able to do a lot of these things, so make sure that you're preparing yourself so that you are going to be your best self for your wedding day and get as much sleep as possible. I know with all your friends coming into town, all your family members, it's easy to want to stay up all night and have a good time with your friends, but make sure that the night before your wedding, you're still getting a good amount of sleep so that you can wake up feeling refreshed and ready for all those photos and ready for the long day ahead of you on your wedding day. So those are the top 10 things that you should be doing the day before your wedding. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.